Coming up, extreme weather. We'll take a look at the science behind twisters. Then allergies explained. Everything you need to know about allergies this spring. Also, what's on your mind? Hi, my name is Lynette and I am almost seven. My question is, why do you have jet lag sometimes when you get back from another country? We'll answer that question and more. Plus, new pup in town. We're at the zoo in Tennessee with the details. And past the bricks, this California teen is inspiring creativity and paying it forward. I definitely always feel that same joy when I build, like even now. One kid that gets one of these sets can feel that same thing. I think that's all I need. That's awesome. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It's always great to be with you. We've got a wonderful lineup ahead, including our picture of the week. Plus, we'll put you to the test in this week's pop quiz. But let's begin with one of the stories making headlines this week. Parts of the country have been hit with some severe storms recently, including tornadoes. We know tornadoes can be scary, but if you understand exactly how a tornado forms, it can help you and your family stay safe, so it's important information. We asked our good friend Dylan Dreyer to look at the science behind these twisters. And kids, you may want to grab a parent or grown-up to watch with you in case you have questions. The weather is something scientists love to study, but it can be tricky to predict sometimes. One day it could be sunny, and the next it could be stormy. And then there's extreme weather, like a tornado, which is a powerful force of nature. Did you know a tornado is a really strong rotating column of air that extends from a cloud all the way to the ground? A tornado can form inside a big thunderstorm, but how? Well, it has a lot to do with air temperature and moisture. When cold, dry air moving from one direction bumps into warm air, it can form a tornado. Inside those thunderclouds, warm, humid air rises, and air currents around the thunderstorm can create a spin that starts out horizontal and then turns vertical as the air is pulled up into the thunderstorm. Now, when the rotating tube of air turns vertical, it forms a funnel cloud, and when that funnel cloud touches down over land, that's when it becomes a tornado. Because tornadoes twist and turn as they move, they are also called twisters. A really strong tornado can destroy homes and buildings and pick up large objects like trucks. But tornadoes dropping houses on witches only happens in the movies. Tornadoes can occur throughout the year, but they mostly form during the spring and summer months. We know this can sound scary, but if you know what you're doing, you can stay safe. First, stay aware of weather conditions in your area. Keep an eye on the local news to see what they are reporting. Listen for tornado warnings. There are sounds to let people know in and around where you live that severe weather is on its way. Tornado warning. And if you hear that sound, then you will know what to do to stay safe. And part of that is knowing where to go, whether you're at home, at school, or a friend's house. If a tornado warning goes off, seek shelter. Go to a basement. If you don't have a basement, go to an inside room without windows on the lowest floor of your home, like a bathroom or a closet, or even a center hallway. Avoid rooms with windows. And make sure you're as close to the middle of your house as you can be. And most importantly, listen to your parents or a grown-up. They're there to protect you and keep you safe. Dylan, thanks so much. Meantime, spring is officially here now, and with that comes the start of allergy season. Here to help explain just what allergies are and why our eyes may be getting itchy this time of year is our good pal, Dr. John Torres. What are allergies, and why do people have it in this time anyways? That's a great question. Allergies are a response from your immune system when something it doesn't like enters your body. Things that can cause allergies are known as allergens. There's millions of people in the United States that have allergies. And so each of us can really be allergic to different things and have different ways that they make us feel. Some grown-ups and kids are allergic to certain foods. Common food allergens are peanuts, milk, or fish. There are also indoor allergens like dust, cats, and dogs, and outdoor allergens including trees, grass, or weeds. 
Spring is a popular time for outdoor allergies to emerge because plants, trees, and grass are all growing, releasing pollen into the air. But you may also hear them referred to as seasonal allergies. Allergens can get into your body through your mouth, nose, eyes, and skin. When your body does come into contact with an allergen, it will create antibodies to fight it, similar to how it does with a virus. Remember antibodies? Those are our body's own special army to fight invaders. This is why so many symptoms of spring allergies overlap with symptoms of a cold or even the coronavirus. So you might get sniffles, sneezes, a headache, or even feel tired. So when we have allergies, our body actually mistakes those things for being invaders. It's really our body just being on overdrive, thinking that it's something trying to get in. The good news, kids, allergies are treatable. Many indoor and outdoor allergies can be treated with medicines from the drugstore. But people with severe allergies or food allergies may need to carry around an EpiPen, which is an emergency medicine they can take if they come into contact with one of their allergens. Some people, their allergies will be very obvious. So every time they go to their friend's house with a cat and they just sneeze and sneeze and sneeze, um, that's going to be a cat allergy. Um, but other people's aren't as obvious. And so if you're worried or concerned um, and you're just stuffy, sneezing, kind of itchy eyes a lot, you can go see your doctor um, and they can better evaluate. How do you know if it's allergies or a virus such as the common cold or COVID-19? Fevers, chills, and body aches are usually symptoms of viruses like COVID-19, while allergies can cause watery eyes and itchiness. Allergy season is longer and stronger than before because of all the climate changes that we're going through. That means that some of you that have never had allergies before might end up noticing watery, itchy eyes, you're sneezing, and you have a runny nose. So this year, when you come back in from playing outside, make sure that you wash off your face, you change your clothes, and maybe even rinse your hair to get rid of all that pollen. Okay, now for what's on your mind. It's spring break for a lot of you guys, and that means many families are traveling to see loved ones and go on vacation. And we just received this question from one of our viewers. Hi, my name is Lynette, and I am almost seven. My question is, why do you have jet lag sometimes when you get back from another country? Bye. Hi, Lynette, and we're glad you're watching. It's a great question. And, and Dr. John, you know, I was we were talking a moment ago as a news correspondent, you have to travel all over the world sometimes and operate in different time zones. And I'm still trying to find the secret to beating jet lag. And you're not alone. Everybody's trying to find that secret, and we just haven't figured it out quite yet. But jet lag is essentially, if you cross two or more time zones, so if you go, let's say, from Denver to New York, you're crossing two time zones, you can get jet lag. And what that means is your body isn't where it's used to being. Our bodies have these things called circadian rhythms. And circadian rhythms are the, basically the internal clock we have, which matches the clock that's in the area you live. And so when the sun comes up, you wake up. When the sun goes down, you go to sleep. You get hungry at certain time periods. You get more tired towards the evening, more awake towards the morning. That's your circadian rhythm. And what happens with jet lag is that gets thrown off because you go to another area and let's say I leave Colorado and I go to Europe. I'm used to being awake and eating lunch at noon, whereas in Europe, I'm ready to go to bed. My body's not ready for that yet. And so your body needs time to get used to that. And that's what we call jet lag. So for kids and grownups, what are some simple steps we can do to kind of alleviate some of, the, <laughs> some of that feeling? And the best thing you can do is when you get there is number one, stay healthy. That means stay hydrated, eat good foods, do those kind of things. And but drinking water on the airplane too. Exactly, right? drink yeah. water on the airplane because that's gonna dry you out. It's a very dry environment. But the other thing is you wanna change your schedule to the local schedule where you are. And so even though you might not be tired at 10 o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night, if it's time to go to sleep, go to sleep. The other thing is more importantly, because this is harder, make sure in the morning that you wake up because otherwise you're just gonna sleep in and that jet lag is just gonna keep going on and on. That leads to my next question about, is a nap worth it? Uh, sometimes yeah. you, you give in, you think, oh, just give me one hour, please. Well, the problem is if you nap too much, it's gonna throw off that rhythm again and you're not gonna get used to the area you're in. So the naps, you wanna make sure that they're less than 30 minutes. And you can take a couple during the day, but try to avoid too many of those. And again, just try to tough through it to get to that point where you can resync your schedule. The other thing, 
the main thing that can help you get back into the area you're in and make sure your clock matches the area is sunlight because our bodies are used to sunlight waking us up and going the sun going down, us going to bed. And so in the morning, especially if you can exercise or go on a hike with your family, go out there early in the morning, get you awake and get you ready for the day and you're good to go. Awesome. Well, Dr. John, thanks so much for coming on. I do have one question yeah. for you. There's one animal, insect, one type of thing that does not have a circadian rhythm, that doesn't get affected by these kind of things. Can you think of the one thing that it is? The one? It, I'll give you a hint. It's yeah. an insect. An insect? It's got to be the roach. No, it's a honeybee. <laughs> really? They're the only ones that really don't have Leave circadian rhythm. Leave it to me, we go with the roach, the New Yorker here. <laughs> there you go. But everybody else, cows, horses, us, dogs, cats, they all have the same circadian rhythm, and they can get jet lag just as well. All right. Terrific. Dr. John, appreciate it. You bet. Now for our picture of the week, we're headed to Washington, D.C., where the famous cherry blossom trees have reached full bloom, and they're earlier this year. The National Park Service says this is the second earliest peak bloom on record for the iconic Yoshino cherry trees. They will bloom for the next several days, during which an estimated 1.5 million visitors will flood the nation's capital for the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Well, time for our pop quiz. The question this week is a pretty timely one. Which college sport is played during what is known as March Madness? Is it A, baseball, B, basketball, or C, softball? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, you knew this one. Time's up. The answer is B, basketball. The NCAA tournament begins this week. NCAA stands for National Collegiate Athletic Association. Did you know the term March Madness was first used in reference to basketball by an Illinois high school official back in the late 1930s? But the term didn't find its way into the NCAA tournament until a broadcaster used it during coverage of the tournament back in 1982. And the rest, as they say, is history. And by the way, the first NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament was played in 1939. Oregon was the first champion, beating Ohio State for the title. A lot of sports trivia there for you to work with. All right, well, here's something that caught our eye this week. Check out this rare newborn Fanaloka pup, recently born at the Nashville Zoo. A Fanaloka is a small mammal native to the lowland and rainforest areas of Madagascar. But don't let its size fool you. This small nocturnal species is actually the second largest endemic predator in Madagascar. The Nashville Zoo is the only facility in the United States to house and represent the elusive Fanaloka. And this newborn pup is great news for the conservation of this vulnerable species. So congratulations on the new addition. And finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, one California teen is sharing his love for Legos and paying it forward to help kids who are struggling. Let's get details from our friend Steve Patterson. 17-year-old Charlie Jeffers is making all the pieces fit together. He's building something big with Legos. Charlie started an organization called Pass the Bricks, taking unwanted Lego sets and rebuilding them for kids in need. The goal is to have it so that every brick has the opportunity to get kind of like another life and that every person who wants Lego has, a, has access to that. He came up with the idea after seeing so many of those tiny pieces being thrown away. Plastic is never going away. Might as well just kind of reuse what we have instead of, kind of making more. Charlie's love of Legos started from a young age. I think that one was like a super fun one to build. In his room, he got sets of all shapes and sizes. Is the pleasure in putting it together or displaying it or, or both? I think for me, it's mostly just building it. Yeah. Like, I think that is just so fun for me. Did you know Lego blocks were invented in Denmark in 1932? Its name comes from the Danish words legat, which means play well. There are over 3,400 different types of Lego bricks in over 60 colors. Every year, Lego sells more than 70 billion pieces, and there are fans in over 130 countries around the world. So the great thing about building with Legos is how it feels, the creativity, the spontaneity, you're working with your hands, anybody can do it, and if you dream it, you can build it. Charlie's creativity, inspiring others to pay it forward through donations. 
These are all the donated bricks that we haven't sorted through yet or washed. Yeah, There's some yeah. really special pieces here. What's that? X oh wing. man, it's an X-Wing. Uh, this is awesome. I wouldn't find a lot of like right. these elsewhere, so it's, it's always fun getting like super cool stuff. Yeah. Before the Legos are donated, Charlie cleans them, designs the pieces into new sets, and then delivers them to local groups for kids. And it's a way for him to give back to his community. I remember going to one of the Boys and Girls Clubs. They saw those Legos and they got so excited. I think that honestly really made me want to like make this like as big as I could. Charlie now has volunteers in more than 40 cities around the world, collecting 1,500 pounds of bricks and donating over 3,500 sets. Did you think it would be so big? I, I hoped, but I definitely always feel that same joy when I build, like even now. One kid that gets one of these sets can feel that same. Thing. I think that's all I need. That's awesome. Yeah. One team building change, brick by brick. Uh, I got to love what he's doing. Steve, thanks for bringing that story to us. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, grab the camera and email a video question to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nightly Kids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Thanks for watching and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.